come home and bring your talents home and let's lift the boats that are stuck at the bottom. We must heal the breach between Reverend Jackson and Louis Farrakhan. We must never be a divided community. We must not be afraid to embrace one another because it is our unity that will spell the success and it is our division that will legislate us or dictate our failure. And history will record us as the most foolish people that ever lived, that we had a chance to develop an agenda to save ourselves and we blew it. So in my conclusion, Jesus made a parable. Jesus, I got to go. <laughs> Jesus made a parable. He told his disciples, when you go down by the well, you're going to see an ass and a colt tied with her. Loose them. Loose the ass and the colt and bring them unto me. And if any man say anything to you, tell them the Lord hath need of them. In this instruction to his disciples, Jesus applies the principle of use. The black man in America is comparable to the donkey that is tied. He's no longer useful to the slave master's children, but the cord of ownership is still on his neck. <laughs> We're not stealing your slave. You have no more use for them. We got use for them. So we are coming to cut the cord that ties you to an evil master and telling you if they don't have use for you, the Lord have need of you. He will take a foolish people and vex a great nation with a foolish people. He will take the things that are weak to confound the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. And so my beloved, don't worry, the future is bright. The future is gonna be all right if we act in accord with the time. What time is it? Rhetorically, you used to say nation time, but substantively, it is time for us to get out of a slave mode and get into the mode of a free man. It's time to come to birth in a new mentality and to put to death an old slave mind. It's time to be born as a new person and to die as the old Negro. It's time to come together as a family, yes. not being divided by Baptist, Methodist, Episcopalian, Church of God in Christ, Muslim, Buddhist. We are one family, not being divided by Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal. What are these names mean? We are a family. We need to come together into unity. And so my beloved family, my dear, and beloved brothers and sisters, last but not least, our youth are languishing in prison with no hope, prisons full. I would like to propose that since we are the sons and daughters of Africa and we have not given up our connection to or our right to the mother continent. That's right. Are you listening? That's really we got a greater right to Africa than the Jews have to Palestine. Right. Are you listening? Don't be angry with me. They are Europeans, many of them, that have never lived in Palestine. Are you listening to me? But the governments united and took a home from the Palestinians and gave it to the Jews in the name of prophecy. Well, all right, we come back in that same name of prophecy. Right. We are the lost sheep. 
We are the people, the prodigal son, that went away into a strange land to live the life of strange people. But now we have been found. Many of us, we have contributed to make America great, and we don't want to leave America. But there is a significant part of black people that want to return. Listen now, I think we ought to appeal. I think we ought to appeal to our African brothers and sisters and say, look, there's a significant part of us that want to come home. We want you to set aside some territory right. for us in Africa. Yes, listen, sir. listen. That has, that's fertile and minerally rich with an outlet to the sea. Come yes, on. Go ahead. Listen now. We want to bring home what we've learned by our sojourn in America. And just like you made the Jews citizens of Israel and citizens of America, we want to be citizens of Africa and citizens here. Listen. Watch out now. I know, I know, we got to go. We got to go. But since America was founded by criminals, and when a new world was discovered, they let the prisons turned them out, yeah. and they came and laid the base Come of a new world. Come on. I'm saying that in the jails of America, Come on. there's strong black, black men, man. strong black women, Come on. who are not criminals. That's right. Malcolm X was in jail, That's right. but the word got him and brought him up, and he made a change in everybody's life yeah. that he touched as a sign that the best of us is in jail. Come on. But if you give me your tired and your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe Come free, right. just send them Come the on. homeless tempest toss yeah. to the nation of Islam and we'll make them better. Come on. Then we'll ask the president, let them go. Come on. Let them do their time Come on. in Africa, Come on. building a new nation, a new people, a new world. And since it takes $35,000 a year to keep them, Come on. you give that money to us and invest it along with damages, Come on. along with reparations. Come on. And let's build here, let's build there. And remember, as I leave you, even though you say African-American, let that never be Come a denial of black. Yeah. Come on. Because before there was a continent named Africa, we were black. We were black. Yes, sir. Remember now, White folk named that continent Africa. And white folk named this continent America. Now you can be African American, but if you forget your blackness, Come on. then you won't tie yourself to the black people in Brazil, in Nicaragua, in Costa Rica, in Guatemala. Come on. Huh? in Honduras, in Central America, in the Caribbean, in South America, in the Isles of the Pacific, in Fiji, in Papua New Guinea, in Australia, black people all over the world. We are one family. Stay together, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum. not used, they are misused and abused, then by that faulty stewardship, America has forfeited the right to steward our lives. We cannot put our future in the hands of a government that has not shown a willingness to care for us. Dear politicians, we know we can get something from the political process, but we cannot pin our hopes on a government yes. that brought our fathers into slavery and to this very moment refuses 
to give us justice. Do you remember? Do you remember? I'm moving quickly. Forgive me. Do you remember that this people took from us name, language, culture, religion, God, then hitched us to a plow, denied us the right to marry, and produce the basic unit of civilization, which is family, denied us the right over our own bodies, that we as black men became stud horses, and our women became women of convenience for us to go into so she could make a baby that the slave master may sell from one plantation to another while the father went one way, the mother went another, the baby went another. This didn't happen for one day. This didn't happen for one year, but for 300 long years. What is the effect? What is the effect of that? on the moral character of a people. What is the effect of that on a people psychologically? So here comes Abraham Lincoln, not willing to free you, but desiring to preserve the union. Mr. Lincoln, the father of the Republican Party said that he was not in favor of making you jurors. He was not in favor of your becoming equal that as long as you were in America, there would always be the position of superior and inferior, and he, as much as any other white man, desired the superior position to be assigned to the white race. These are the words of Lincoln in the Lincoln-Douglas debates. Now listen, that condition prevails today. He said, we suffer from your presence, and you suffer from our feelings concerning you. The suffering continues. Hear me, my beloved brothers and sisters, the government of the United States in letting us go didn't help us to amend the condition that 300 years of slavery had put us in. Please listen. They amended the Constitution, which is a document of paper. So they amended it with the stroke of the pen. One day we were slaves. Next day we were free. Next day we are citizens. Next day due process of law. Next day civil rights law, public accommodations law. What does that really mean? Oh, I don't have time to analyze these things with you. But beloved, please, if I can just say it in Quick little scratch, you're deep enough to go on into it as we must in developing an agenda. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the United States government, recognizing that we were incapable of going for ourselves, they struck down the law of voluntary slavery with the 14th Amendment or the 13th Amendment. But what about involuntary? I mean, uh, voluntary slavery. They struck down the law relating to involuntary slavery. But don't you know, when you don't know how to go for yourself and we strike down involuntary slavery, you voluntarily become what you were yesterday involuntarily. And look at you today. Look at you today, involuntary slaves that got to conf confer with your master yes. over whether you should bring yes. Farrakhan here. <laughs> you got to confer. Some of you. Some of you wondering yes. if he says the wrong thing. Yes. Maybe somebody won't finance me. Yes. Maybe I won't get a few crumbs. Shame on you. You modern day slave. Look. Look. They promised us 40 acres and a mule. And they took that back. We gave America her freedom, her right to become a sovereign nation. We fought, bled, and died in the Revolutionary War. 
Over 400,000 black people were in the Civil War on the side of the North and the South. We fought for America, helped her to become independent and strong. She became strong on the labor and the backs of black people held back by fraud. Now here we are in 1989 looking for our next welfare check. When our money is in Fort Knox, yes. the money that belonged to the descendant of slaves right. is in Fort Knox. Yes. yes, Reverend Jackson, I'm with you. Right. We should go after yes. the pension funds. Right. Yes, Reverend Jackson, I'm with you. Not just one percent, but Reverend Jackson, we need to move on the government from a position of strength based upon a moral principle and a precedent that has already been set. When the Jews were mistreated by Germany, after the Germans uh, were liberated by the Western society, the Germans built their economy and now they are paying reparations to the Jews to the tune of billions of dollars to repair the damage. In 1941 when Japan struck Pearl Harbor they put the the blacks, I mean the, the, the Japanese in concentration camps, confiscated their property but the Congress feeling remorseful, feeling sorry, knowing that they were wrong. Congress said, Congress said, we got to right this wrong. So they decided that reparations would do the Japanese. Well then, I appeal to you. Come on, Reverend Jackson. Come on, leaders. Come on, pastors. Now, Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I got a plane to catch. I got another engagement, but I got to complete this point. Yes. <laughs> go ahead. All right. Complete it. We need to go to the government and say to the government, hold on, sister. No, I want to say this, that it is not the convention heads that are limiting my time. They are telling me, go on. I just have a plane to catch for another engagement, but I'm going to try to tie this right up. Listen, we need to, as a united front, go to the government and say, look, you've done this here, you've done this there. What about us? All right. What about us? Why should our people have to subsist on charity or live in poor houses when we built the country for you, fought, bled, and died to maintain the country for you? You ask us to pay taxes like everybody else. Wait a minute. We don't get justice. We give you our tax dollar to support a police department that doesn't respect us. We give you our tax dollar to support education that does not educate us properly. We give you our tax dollars. You spend $4 billion each year on Israel to maintain Israel in a welfare position. You send billions of dollars. You rebuilt Germany. You rebuilt Japan. Here we are, fought, bled, and died, made you what you are. What are you willing to come on down with to help the black man rebuild himself? All praise is due to our love. So... I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. I'm only part way through what I wanted to say. Because if the government doesn't do their part, we've got to do ours. We've got to understand that education as it is, is not sufficient. We need a re-education. We need an education that will make us able to serve ourselves and one another. We have to tell the preachers, all the preachers, we got work to do. We've got to make our people valuable to themselves. 
the educators, the preachers, and the politicians. We must work together, pull our strength inward. Stop trying to prove to white people that you're such a good lapdog and come home. Oh, you say African-American, let that never be a denial of black. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Because before there was a continent named Africa, we were black. We were black. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Remember now, white folk named that continent Africa. And white folk named this continent America. Now you can be African American, but if you forget your blackness, Come on. then you won't tie yourself to the black people in Brazil, in Nicaragua, yeah. in Costa Rica, in Guatemala, Come on. Huh? in Honduras, in Central America, in the Caribbean, in South America, in the Isles of the Pacific, in Fiji, in Papua New Guinea, in Australia, yes, black sir. people all oh. over the world. Yes, we are one family. Stay together, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum.